Hello, Calculus II students, and welcome to our first lecture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about inverse functions. And here's our definition. Given a function f of x, the function g of x is the inverse of f of x. Exactly when g evaluated at f of x equals x and f evaluated at g of x equals x. And we want to make some observations here. Note that the functions f of x and g of x undo one another through function composition. Whatever f does to x, g undoes it, and we get x back. Whatever g of x does to x, f undoes it, and we get x back. And uh, maybe one observation we can make before we look at an example. g evaluated at f of x equals x, and f evaluated at g of x equals x. So that means that g of x is the inverse of f of x. But if we look at that, we might say, well, you know, f evaluated at g of x equals x, and g evaluated at f of x equals x. So wouldn't that also mean that f is the inverse of g of x? And the answer is yes. If g is the inverse of x, I'm oh, sorry, if g is the inverse of f of x, then f of x is the inverse of g of x also. Uh, functions and inverses come in pairs, kind of like being married. Uh, if John is married to Susan, then Susan is also married to John. So if f is the inverse of g, then g is the inverse of f also, and vice versa. Now, let's look at some examples. Let's consider the function f of x equals x cubed. Uh, the inverse of f of x would be that function that reverses whatever it is that f does to x. So let me ask you something. Suppose I take a number and cube it. What would I have to do to the result in order to get back the original number? Uh, for example, let's say I take the number 3 and I cube it. I get 27, right? What would I have to do to the result 27? to get back the original number three. Wouldn't I have to compute or take the cube root of the result? The cube root or that number to the one third power. So that gives us some insight as to what the inverse of f of x should be. If f of x takes a number and cubes it, then the inverse of f of x is going to be the cube root of that number, or that number raised to the one-third power. Let's just do some computation here and see if it works. Now notice here, f of x plays the role that, a, that x plays up here in our model of g of x. Down here, f of x is playing the role that x plays up here in our model of g of x. So every place that we see an x in our model, we're going to put an f of x down here. So g evaluated at f of x is f of x to the one-third. 
And we're given that f of x is x cubed. So g evaluated at f of x is x cubed raised to the one-third power. Now let me ask you this. If we have something raised to a power, and that whole thing is raised to a power, what do the exponents do? That's right, they multiply. So what we have here is x to the power of 3 times 1 third, and we get x. So we've established that g evaluated at f of x is x. Now let's go the other way. Let's take f and evaluate it at g of x. Notice that down here, g of x is playing the role. I'm sorry, yeah. Down here, g of x is playing the role that x plays up here in our model of f of x. So every place up here that we see in x, uh, every place up here in our model of f of x that we see in x, we're going to put a g of x down here. And we're given that g of x is x to the one-third. So we can write this is x to the one-third cubed. And again, we ask that question. If we have something raised to a power, and that whole thing is raised to a power, what do the exponents do? They multiply. So we have x to the one-third times 3, or x to the first power, which is x. So we've shown that f evaluated at g of x is x. Let's make sure we get this. We've just shown that g evaluated at f of x equals x, and f evaluated at g of x equals x. Therefore, g of x, which is x to the one-third, is the inverse of f of x equals x cubed. And vice versa. f of x equal x cubed is also the inverse of g of x equal x to the one-third. This is a good example for inverses. But let's do another one. Let's look at this example f of x equal 2x minus 3, and g of x equal x plus 3 over 2. Is g the inverse of x, and I'm sorry, is g the inverse of f of x, 
And is f the inverse of g of x? Let's find out. To find out, we're going to take g and we're going to evaluate it at f of x. Notice that right here, f of x is playing the role that x plays up here in our model of g of x. So every place that we see an x up here in our model of g of x, we're going to put f of x down here. And we're given that f of x equals 2x minus 3, so we'll make that substitution. And we have 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, we get x. That looks good. Now let's go the other way. Let's take f and evaluate it at g of x. And notice, down here, g of x plays the role that x plays up here in our model of f of x. So every place that we see an x in our model of f of x, we're going to put a g of x down here. So this will give us 2g of x minus 3. And we're given that g of x equals x plus 3 over 2. So we'll make that substitution. That will substitute x plus 3 over 2 for g of x here. And when we simplify, these twos cancel. Whoops. No, I don't think we get zero. And we get x. And by the way, note that whatever it is that f of x does to x, g of x undoes it, and we get x back. Notice that whatever it is that g of x does to x, f of x undoes it, and we get x back. Each one of them undoes the other through function composition. G of x is the inverse of f of x and vice versa. So in other words, each one is the inverse of the other. Okay, let's have some closing remarks on the topic of inverse functions.
inverse functions come in pairs. If g of x is the inverse of f of x, then f of x is also the inverse of g of x. Now here's something I haven't mentioned yet. By convention, we often represent the inverse of x this way. This f with the superscript negative 1 evaluated at x. And when we see this symbol, here's how we pronounce it. We look at this and we say f inverse of x. So whenever we see this, we look at this and say f inverse of x or f inverse evaluated at x. So whenever we see this, we're going to say f inverse of x. And just to uh, give some relevance to this notation in light of our preceding examples, we looked at f of x equals x cubed, and we found out that its inverse was x to the one-third. So given f of x equal x cubed, f inverse of x is x to the one-third. But we also looked at f of x equal 2x minus 3. And if we remember correctly, its inverse was x plus 3 over 2. So given f of x equal 2x minus 3, f inverse of x is x plus 3 over 2. Now, I could let you go right now, but I'm going to rant and rave for a minute or two. Why do we care about inverse functions? Uh, just recently, we've been exposed to the natural logarithm of x. Uh, we've looked at the derivative of natural logarithm of x. We've looked at integrals that yield natural logarithm of x. And I'm here to tell you that even though we may not have heard of natural log of x before the end of Calculus 1, natural log of x is not just the flavor of the week. It's not just a passing topic of interest that we'll look at for a week or two and then never see again. Uh, we may not have seen this function before, but that doesn't mean that it's not important. It turns out that natural logarithm of x is one of the most important functions in math and science. Uh, at least as important as the trigonometric functions. Uh, natural logarithm of x may even be more important than that. Uh, it has plenty of applications in engineering and physics and also in biology. Uh, as far as, uh, let's say, uh, bacterial colonies and the rate at which they grow or the rate at which they die off, uh, predator and prey models and so forth. Uh, if we haven't seen natural log of x before, it's just because we hadn't gotten into advanced study yet. Uh, but probably if we stay in math and science, we're going to see natural logarithm of x quite a bit. But I still haven't told you why inverse functions are important. Well, it turns out that the natural logarithm function has an inverse. Uh, the inverse of natural logarithm of x is also one of the most important functions in math and science. Uh, we probably haven't seen this function yet, uh, but we will, and it's very important. Not just in math, uh, but it's important in engineering, biology, chemistry. If we haven't seen it yet, it's just because we haven't gotten into the advanced topics of our specialization yet. But uh, yes, the natural log of x does have a marriage mate. It does have an inverse. And you know what? 
that's the next topic that we're going to look at.